Hello everybody, hola a todos, cześć wszystkim. In this video about Keycloak, I'm going to show you how to set up and customize password policies, enforce MFA and how to test your application. I will also show you how to validate JSON Web Token because obviously you should not trust every JSON Web Token that your application receives. In case you don't have Keycloak running, please check out my previous video which shows how to set up Kubernetes on uh, Keycloak on Kubernetes. Uh, Keycloak is great for SaaS products, cloud-based SaaS products. It fits really nicely into multi-tenant architecture. You can create a new realm for every customer or for every tenant. This way you can have a full control and full flexibility over customers' requirements. For example, some may be very rigorous in password change frequency, uh, require special characters, mm, different uh, length of password history. Some can have uh, MFA optional, uh, but for some MFA is a must. This all can be uh, customized per customer, per tenant or as Kiklo calls this per realm. So uh, let's see how to do this. Before we uh, do this, uh, we have to make one small change to the deployment, which I showed you in the previous uh, video. Um, in this video, we will use keycloak.org slash app. That's a test application, which was uh, developed by Keycloak um, developers. It is a uh, application that is uh, delivered over HTTPS. So uh, we need our application to be HTTPS as well. Otherwise, Chrome will block unsecure HTTP requests. So um, I already updated the instructions in the readme file. Uh, so if you are setting this up for the first time, everything will work. If you already have Keycloak uh, ingress uh, installed, uh, you have to um, delete it and uh, create a new one. So delete it and uh, I already have this um, certificate created, I already have this uh, secret uh, created, so I'm just going to apply this new ingress. This new ingress, if you take a look at it, is, uh, is pretty simple. Uh, I only added this uh, TLS section here. Uh, it references the um, secret which uh, I created in this step and it adds hosts fake. Uh, the host is intentionally different from this one here. Um, otherwise, uh, Chrome uh, would reject uh, this HTTP uh, certificate it will say that it was not validated by any NCA in case of uh, mismatch uh, there will be an option for you to accept this um, certificate so that's just a workaround for Chrome um, to accept this certificate when you go to production the hosts and host of course should match and should be your uh, your domain so uh, let's see uh, the application i will be using the ui but every action that i will do you can do uh, using uh, uh, keycloak rest api uh, it is documented uh, and available at keycloak.org uh, it is a json based one and you have a full information about how such requests should look like. I'll also talk about this REST API in um, in future videos. Uh, I will be showing you how to import, export uh, tenants uh, from uh, and out of Keycloak. And I will also touch on a J JSON uh, REST API because uh, we can use some of the import uh, out, uh, out, uh, out import export, sorry, uh, functionality together with the REST API. Okay, I will log in into the console using the default uh, credentials. 
which you should change. Um, okay, so I already have uh, a customer one uh, realm created, but I will go ahead and create customer two. It will take like yeah a few seconds. Okay, so uh, what we will do uh, now? Um, we don't have any users yet, so we um, we will actually allow user registration. Mm, we want the email to be a username. This will also guarantee that the usernames will be unique. Uh, you cannot edit the username, uh, forget password, why not? Remember me, why not? Verify email if you are in production. That should be, of course, set to uh, on. I will leave uh, the rest uh, as default. Okay. Uh, and now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, password uh, policies. So let's go into the authentication section. Uh, here you have a bunch of settings. They are all very well documented. Uh, we can leave the flows as is. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, authentication flows, uh, check out the documentation. Uh, the defaults are okay for us. So uh, password policies. As I said, you can have a different password policy for every of your customers. That's pretty uh, powerful feature. So say um, we want, of course, special characters, but for this tenant, we want to have two. We want, um, of course, at least one uppercase, uh, one lowercase, um, digits, uh, password length of eight. Yeah, eight can be fine. Uh, not recently used, so password history, I will set it to 10. Mm, not a username, of course. Uh, expire password, so we will be expiring passwords after, after 90 days. Mm, okay, uh, password blacklist, uh, regular expressions, um, hashing algorithm. Uh, that's a, a really uh, nice uh, algorithm. It actually stretches your key. So even if you use a simple password, uh, when you use this algorithm, it will st stretch the key and it will, will make it uh, less um, vulnerable to brute force attacks. You can also specify hashing iterations to this algorithm. I read somewhere that uh, LastPass is using 100,000 iterations on their servers. So yeah, you can set it uh, to a pretty high uh, value, but still our passwords will be quite strong given those uh, requirements. I will hit save now. Okay, last uh, action that we have to do is to uh, set up uh, MFA. Here we have configure OTP. It is enabled, meaning that users can do this, but we all want to actually enforce this. So I will uh, select the default uh, action here. Last thing that we uh, need to do is to register a new client. There's a bunch of clients uh, out of the box, uh, but I will create a new one for the Keycloak test application. So I'm going to copy this URL. Uh, we will call it portal. Root URL is the Keycloak uh, application. Okay, we will leave the uh, the defaults uh, as they are. We don't need them. Uh, I will copy this uh, URL. I will sign out. And this is the customer to uh, login portal. Um, we don't have any users yet. We have the forgot password, remember me, register. These are the features that we uh, selected in, in Keycloak. So we are going to register. Uh, password. I will make a mistake on purpose. 
So here you can see that we set two special characters and uh, we have to provide two special characters. Okay, and we set MFA as a required step. So let me quickly take my mobile phone. I will add it. And And here we are. We can uh, do some uh, management uh, of our own account, uh, but yeah, the most important one is that we already have this uh, setup and uh, we can use a um, key cloak to, uh, to test our sample application. Okay. So, uh, let me... Okay, and let's hit save. Uh, now we can uh, sign in into Keycloak. We are redirected to Keycloak. I will use the account that we just created. One time code. Okay, I have a breakpoint here. Uh, okay, uh, and I can continue. So I logged in. Uh, in the JSON Web Token, uh, there was information about my first name and last name, and I uh, the application printed it. I also printed a token in here. This is uh, the row token that the application exchanged. So I can copy it and verify it. I will use uh, JSON web token uh, .io website. Um, it is uh, a pretty neat tool for debugging or troubleshooting uh, and verifying your JSON web tokens. Um, as I said, uh, as we already know, JSON Web Tokens are open, industry standard method for representing claims securely between two parties. So uh, let's check how securely this is done. So I will paste the row token in here. As you can see, the tokens are color coded. Uh, sorry, the, the parts, uh, there are three parts of each token. Uh, they are separated by a dot. And uh, for convenience, uh, in here they are color coded. That is just a sample uh, JSON Web Token, uh, uh, which uh, automatically appears uh, on the website. I will uh, paste our JSON Web Token, so we can have some uh, information about the the token in the header part of it. Um, what type, what algorithm was used? Then we have the payload which contains the information that Keycloak uh, provided. Um, it has some uh, metadata in here. Uh, it also has some of the attributes about the user and we can have uh, a different attributes per, uh, per client. We uh, created a client dedicated to keycloak.org slash app. We, ha we can have a different uh, clients for different systems that can actually contain um, different uh, attributes. The third part of the JSON Web Token is 
information about the uh, the signature so how do we verify that this token was actually issued by uh, by our keycloak uh, server so uh, we can uh, get the public key uh, from here that's the rsa key we can get the public key it is not a valid pem format uh, that is why i will use uh, rest api with some bash uh, commands to actually uh, make it a valid uh, pem so i will just curl it this is a public information because public key can be read by anybody uh, this endpoint uh, returns uh, a json so maybe uh, yeah it's a json uh, it contains um, a public key field uh, which is just a string we have to uh, extract it from this json and fold it uh, into uh, lines of 40 characters uh, and then we have to prefix it with a begin public key and end it with end public key this way we get a valid pem um, representation of uh, our key and uh, we can paste it in here and yeah signature was verified that we uh, now know that this uh, json web token was signed by a private key which is known only to our key cloak server if for example i will change it yeah invalid signature i should not trust this json web token because it for sure doesn't come from uh from the owner of the private key which matches this uh, this public one so uh folks uh that's uh, all uh, in this uh, episode uh, in next videos i will show you how to enable single sign-on how to uh, integrate the key cloak with uh, github and some uh, and some more so uh, stay tuned uh, if you like the video uh, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you very much